Hi, just on uh, five years ago, we had this uh, three kilowatt home solar power system installed and I've done uh, quite a few videos on this and we'll link it in down below. It actually uses uh, 12 uh, LG Mono X uh, panels, a uh, Sunny Boy TL uh, 3000 inverter and it's been a pretty reliable system apart from one uh, smashed panel that we have. I'll link that video in at the end but I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the numbers of this thing after five years and see was it worthwhile? Did we get a payback? Let's take a look at it. So just a quick uh, physical look at this. After five years, the panels, apart from the smashed one we have, I still think it was uh, a micrometeorite or aliens. Anyway, um, I basically do not clean these things. So put a bit of spit on that. There you go. Might have uh, some dirt on it, but I found that basically the dirt and dust really hasn't had any measurable difference um, in the output from this thing. So we should be able to find out from the numbers uh, whether or not um, you know, there's been any drop over the uh, five years, but everything's still in uh, great condition. The seal uh, down here that we've um, seen, all the silicon sealant which goes through here, that's fine. And uh, the box up here, it's kind of yellowed a bit from the age, but uh, well, from the UV. Oh, yeah, look, that's new. There you go, starting to crack, but the uh, seal is still on there. But basically, it's still in great condition after five years. No worries whatsoever. And the Sunny Boy SMA 3000 TL uh, inverter here hasn't given a lick of trouble in the five years. Um, never had to touch any of the um, isolation uh, switches at all. I've never had to do anything to it. I'm still logging the uh, Bluetooth data regularly. It's been a very reliable inverter. Um, this side of the house doesn't really get the hot afternoon sun. It doesn't even really get morning sun because like there's, there's tree cover. If we have a look at the display there, currently generating uh, almost 1800 uh, watts there at the moment because it's uh, practically winter here in uh, Sydney. So yeah, we're still not going, of course you don't expect your full uh, three kilowatts out of it, uh, a nominal three kilowatts out of it in uh, winter time anyway. But you can see we've exported 19.95 megawatt hours. We can almost round that to 20 megawatt hours over the five years. And for those who don't believe that, we actually have 240 volts here in uh, Australia still. Uh, it's officially 230, but uh, here in my, uh, both at home and at the lab, um, it's, uh, as you can see, 248 volts. And you've seen my uh, fuse box here before. I've still got my uh, solar analytics uh, system down here, which is a GSM uh, transmitter. There's some uh, current monitors behind there. Um, I'll link in that video at the end. And uh, that's been working no problems at all. Just uh, logging the data via uh, the GSM cellular network um, back to the solar analytics uh, website. Then I've got my two um, iTron uh, meters here. The first one at the top here, this is how much uh, energy that we've uh, imported from the grids. Take a look at that, uh, 22,000 kilowatt hours or 22 megawatt hours just over um, and that's what we've actually imported from the grid. Uh, and the other meter down here, these are not smart meters, they're dumb meters. This is how much energy we've exported to the grid. So if we take a look at that, we've exported um, 12,712 kilowatt hours. So let's check out the numbers. And for all this time, as I said, I've been collecting the data via Bluetooth from the Sunny Boy inverter and uploading it to pvoutput.org, uh, which I'll link in down below. All my data is uh, publicly available for this thing. Started in uh, 2013, so we had four full years there, plus the two half years. Turns out to 1,800 days total between... Uh, these data points and that's a nice round number and we can drill that's the yearly data we can drill into the monthly data and and see the uh, uh, cycles over the various years and things like that and then you can go weekly data and then daily data we could simply uh, choose a particular day like this and bingo <laughs> it obviously uh, was very shaded at that point and then wham it, um, it just came good and went back up but you know you can eventually get uh, like some nice full days like if you pick this uh, sunny day over here boom that's almost perfect little bit of shade there for a, a few 
you know, minutes or something and then it drops off. And this drop off at the end, by the way, is when the trees actually come over. And the shape of this will actually change as those trees grew and during the time and at different times of the year as well, because uh, depending on the time of the year, the sun's at a different angle and uh, the tree may or may not, um, you know, co come into effect at that particular point. So, you know, we could get like years apart and see the differences there. And I've also got uh, that GSM data, but I've only been collecting that for the last two years. And I'll link in the installation of that uh, GSM solar analytics uh, thing at the end here. But uh, yeah, we can get actually live uh, consumption data. In fact, let's go over to today production. There it is. Um, as I record this, yep, 3.09 p.m. And if we have a look at the consumption here, which is in uh, purple, you can see that uh, the production was what we saw before in yellow. And uh, we haven't had the air conditioner on today. Um, there's no one there. But you can see this purple spike here. That's when we actually program the uh, dishwasher to turn on when no one's home. Because we've made a few changes like that. Um, things that uh, consume power that can be like time oriented. Uh, so the dishwasher, uh, the washing machine. And we don't really use a dry dryer except in uh, extreme uh, circumstances. Um, we, we don't have uh, electric hot water by the way, we've got gas hot water, but that's basically the only gas appliance apart from the gas uh, barbecue which we don't use that often. So we've got an electric induction uh, cooktop, and if you have a look at uh, yesterday, for example, uh, consumption, we had, you know, there were spikes of um, things operating during the day. Mrs. EV blog uh, was home uh, doing various things. And then you can see um, at night, we did actually use the air conditioner last night. You can see that in the that uh, maroon colored uh, one there and consumption. But you can see that most of our consumption occurs at night and we don't have a storage uh, system. So unfortunately we're wasting away, uh, you know, we're exporting a whole bunch of that energy. We're not wasting it, but in, in terms of financial uh, payback, we are effectively wasting it because as we'll go through the numbers uh, shortly, um, just exporting the energy to the grid here in Australia and in New South Wales, it's a pretty uneconomic uh, solution to export that energy. But we'll run through the numbers later and calculate, is it worthwhile actually getting a payback on a battery storage system? So let's take a look at the numbers here. This is over 1,800 days total. I've got all the figures in megawatt hours, so they're all the uh, same. And as you saw on the meter, 19.95 um, megawatt hours are uh, produced by the three kilowatt uh, solar system over those 1800 days. Um, but I imported 22, just over 22 megawatt hours. So produced around 20, imported 22. So I'm not exactly energy neutral or whatever you want to call it. So if you divide that 19.95 uh, megawatt hours uh, by the 29.28 megawatt hours total household consumption, we're only uh, meeting about 68% of our actual energy consumption needs with that three kilowatt hour system. So technically in terms of like you know, actually producing as much energy as we actually uh, consume as a household, regardless of the source of where it uh, comes from, uh, yeah, a three kilowatt system didn't really do it. Maybe a four kilowatt hour system would be getting uh, closer. Perhaps even four and a half to five kilowatt hour system might be needed to get to that goal of being like essentially energy neutral, uh, so to speak. Now, in a previous video, which I'll link in, I've gone through uh, my bills in more detail and things like that. So I won't do that again. Won't bore you with the details. Um, so let's jump straight to the chase. How, like, what payback did I get? How long did it take? Uh, let's have a look. Now, I've converted all of the figures that we had before into kilowatt hours per day instead of megawatts, um, and that's for the 1800 uh, days because people are more familiar with the um, common kilowatt hour per day energy figure. Now, the cost uh, for my energy, it does vary. Uh, it's varied over the last five years and all sorts of things, but it, it's roughly 28 cents per kilowatt hour. And I know a lot of people are laughing at that, but uh, that does include an optional um, five cents per kilowatt hour, which we pay for green energy coming from uh, new renewable energy infrastructure. That's not compulsory. We've, we've been doing that for like 15 years or something now. Um, so we choose to pay that five cents extra to pay for renewable energy infrastructure. So technically, 
our extra energy actually comes from wind farms. We do actually, we followed the audit trail and that's where it, um, some new wind farms that were installed, but I know it could come from anywhere because it's the grid. Anyway, 28 cents per kilowatt hour, that's what we're paying. And because we live here in Australia and because I live in New South Wales, we get rooted on the feed-in tariff, which is only six cents per kilowatt hour. So we buy it at 28 and we sell it back to them at six. Thanks. Anyway, it has gone up um, just in the last um, nine months or so. It's now uh, at least double that figure, uh, 12 cents here in New South Wales. It varies. Uh, different states are different and we'll get into that. But here it is, six cents. That's what we've been getting for the last five years, basically. Unbelievable. Getting shafted. So over the 1800 days or five years, uh, the electricity which we took from the grid cost us $6,172. So even though we installed this solar system, we still had to pay a heck of a lot for the electricity because it's not particularly uh, cheap here. And the payback, wah, 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 $762 because of that six cents, that lousy six cents per kilowatt hour feed in tariff. It would have been more in another state, but eh, I'm stuck here in New South Wales. Now we get into that hypothetical payback a bit later. Uh, the import energy saved. Um, so that's when we were, fee we were using the energy during the day and that was $2,026 worth of electricity so we actually saved that amount so our total savings was that payback 762 plus 2026 uh, we saved $2,788 over those five years and the system it cost $5,000 it was a premium system at the time um, using top quality um, LG Mono X panels they were like state-of-the-art at the time the SM the expense SMA Sunny Boy inverter, and apart from the cracked uh, panel, which we and so LG tell us anyway, extremely rare event to crack one of these things. Um, so just ignoring that, it's been a super reliable system. Um, there's been zero maintenance costs on the thing, so we haven't actually um, earned our money back yet. It it will take about uh, seven to eight years, roughly, uh, maybe seven years at the new uh, rate. Cheap. We've changed plans now, so we're getting a uh, cheaper rate and we're getting a much higher feed-in tariff, um, more than double what we got before. So it should accelerate now the savings. Now, if you have a look at that hypothetical one, where I said hypothetical payback at the import rate, let's say for example here in Australia if I lived in the Northern Territory which is right up the top end I would get a feed-in tariff that matches what I buy the energy for so I sell it back at the same rate and at that if I actually use that here it is down the bottom payback for the same rate so if you live in a well assuming that you lived in a state that gave you that we would have got our money back already with also if we uh, take into account that we could have installed a cheaper system or if you want to install a cheaper system now for example uh, $3,500 uh, for the same three kilowatt hour system you might even be able to get a bigger system than that but cheaper panels cheaper inverter meh whatever it's probably still it's going to easily last you five years even the cheapies I reckon um, the payback rate would be just over three years so it's pretty good so yeah because we bought a top quality system and we got shafted with the rates and it's all changed now yeah we haven't made our money back but we will in the next couple of years but I expect the system to uh, it'll easily last for and I'd be surprised if that uh, you know inverter gives any trouble in the next following five years or whatever be very surprised the panels seem super reliable everything's uh, working fine so if we don't get 10 years out of that Eh, I think we'll be very unlucky. So, um, yeah, we will get our money back on this thing. So what if we installed a home battery solution to store that extra energy that we were uh, sending back to that grid at that ridiculous rate? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's take the uh, case of the Tesla Powerwall 2. I know it's probably the most expensive system out there, but let's just run with it because it's what everyone knows. Um, it's actually 12750 Australian dollars installed roughly. It's about 9600 Australian dollars just for the unit and some hardware that doesn't include installation costs. So we'll run with that. 
So I've kept the existing figures that we had before in green up the top there, and I've got the new ones in purple below that. Um, and I've changed the uh, cost and the feed-in tariff of the energy to the new rates, um, similar to the new rates that we should be getting now. We had just over 7 kilowatt hours uh, a day available. Uh, that we were exporting before we could now store those seven kilowatt hours a day because remember the uh, Panels remain the same. So we're producing the same amount of energy per day um, So we're now exporting zero assuming that, that once again, these are all like average figures um, It will vary day by day and season by season, but hey We've got average data, let's work with that. And I'm ignoring the uh, efficiency of the battery pack. Around about 90% uh, is typical for these lithium ion uh, battery packs in terms of end-to-end uh, -end system uh, storage and uh, production efficiency. Um, but we'll just ignore that. Let's assume it's perfect, shall we? And uh, so we have seven kilowatt hours a day that we're uh, saving, basically, that we were exporting, but now we can reuse. Um, and at 12 cents per kilowatt hour, that's $306 a year saving. Calculate that out. It's a 41-year payback. Wah, 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 wah. And of course, our 3 kilowatt hour system is still not enough because we still have to import 5.1 kilowatt hours per day. So if we actually upgraded the uh, system, we'd need a roughly a 4.43 kilowatt hour uh, kilowatt system. Keep Mixing those units up, one's power, one's energy, don't mix them up. I'm sure I've done a video on that somewhere. So let's for kicks say just we upgraded to say a 5 kilowatt uh, system. So not including the capital cost to actually buy the extra panels. Uh, so if you wanted say a 5 year payback on an energy storage, uh, battery storage solution like this, um, you'd have to get it for the cost of about 2600 bucks installed. That just ain't going to happen. But even with a 10 year payback, Ah, oh, it's it. We cannot install a battery system for that for a 10 year payback. So, really, here for our circumstances with our energy consumption living here in Sydney, Australia, it's just there's really no economical benefit at all. There's no, I don't see any payback period at all, given the you know the finite life of the uh, battery pack uh, to get any sort of financial payback on a battery storage solution. So, you'd have to be buying it for kicks or you know just because it's fun or because you wanted to be essentially you could almost be you know independent from the grid so to speak and then you'd have power if the grid goes down but it's so rare that the grid goes down here in uh, Sydney really um the battery solution is I don't I don't see the value in it I still might get one just for kicks um, and just, you know, for fun to play around with and get data on and uh, stuff like that and do future videos on. But it wouldn't make economical sense, though. And other battery solutions like uh, LG Chem, for example, they're not hugely cheaper, if they are, um, than the uh, Tesla Powerwall solution, really. So, like, you're not going to get it for a price that's going to make this economically viable, unfortunately. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting. And um, after five years of having this thing, the payback wasn't as quick as I originally calculated because, you know, the data just wasn't there, that it's been five years. That data, that average data, really, you know, that's that's pretty thorough. Um, but yeah, you can get like payback in like two, three years. I know people in other countries are, are getting that payback very quickly. But even here in Australia, um, in certain states, and if you buy a cheap enough system, um, it may not be as good a quality as the system I've got installed, but still going to do the business uh, most likely and you can get a payback in two three years as well so they're very worthwhile but battery storage solutions eh, that's a different ball game um for us not really anyway if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot and as always link on the ev blog forum down below to discuss all youtube comments and subscribe and all that sort of stuff catch you next time Thank <laughs> you.